in the wake of those developments in Karnataka. This is the fallout of which we are seeing in Goa today. The Congress in Goa has submitted a memorandum to the governor after they stick after they've taken claim to form the government yesterday saying that they have the numbers they're the largest party they should have been invited in the first go itself remember this of course uh, being a case of goa elections that were taken place last year but now the congress stepping in saying that they're exercising their right to have been invited by the governor for being the party with not the majority but the largest numbers in the state Goa Assembly. It has submitted this memorandum to the governor saying that it has the numbers staking claim to form the government in the state of Goa. And it just doesn't stop in the state of Goa. It is a domino effect that we are now witnessing. The next state impacted is in Bihar. The scenario no different where you have the party with the largest numbers, the RJD, but not in power. So today the RJD has marched to the governor's house to stake claim to form the government on the same logic of what they have witnessed in Karnataka. They have the largest numbers, not the majority, but based on what has happened in Karnataka, they should be now invited by the governor. They are meeting with the governor over and the RJD to stage a dharna shortly. अभी सरकार पेश दावा पेश करने हम लोग अभी निकले निकल रहे हैं गवर्नर साथ में मिलेंगे और हम सभी कांग्रेस आरजेडी हम और माले पार्टी का हमको समर्थन है और सभी विधायक हमारे साथ गवर्नर हम प्रेस करने के लिए निकल रहे हैं Let's get in further inputs. We have with us our correspondent Sham with those details. Sham, help us understand the RJD's argument today. They, of course, are the largest party, but not with the majority numbers. What are the numbers that they're saying that they have today with great confidence based on which they feel that they should be in power, they should be in government? The RJD, as far as the RJD is concerned, now going on the Karnataka pattern, they say that since in Karnataka the government invited DJP to form the government just on the basis of being the single largest party. So, Tejas Yadav and RJD has been saying that after the JDU and the RJD split here in Bihar, and RJD was the single largest party with 80 MLAs, why did the governor at that time? Remember, cases after the party was the caretaker governor of Bihar at the time. So, Tejas Yadav has asked question as to why did the governor at that time not ask Tejas Yadav and RJD to form a government despite being 80, despite having 80 MLAs in the Bihar Legislative Assembly, rather than the governor uh, asked Nitish Kumar to form the governor and later on he was supported by the JDU. So definitely now they're trying to showcase that the governor and these constitutional officers have been working under pressure from the central government. That is what they have alleged. And Tejasri Yadav today after meeting the governor, he clearly said that as far as the numbers are concerned, I have 80 MLAs with me along with the support of 27 mm -hmm. MLAs from Congress, then 3 MLAs from CPI ML and Jitana Manji's party. Apart from that, he said that there are several MLAs in the JDU also who are in regular touch with them and if given a chance, then definitely he would form the government here in Bihar. Now that is what Tejasri Yadav has been saying. He clearly takes claim. He said that given a chance since uh, they were the single largest party, so they should have been given a chance and the government, they requested the governor again to give them a chance to dissolve the Nitish Kumar government and give Tejasri Yadav a chance to form the government and he said that we are pretty confident that we will prove the majority on the floor of the house. That's right. Sham, this late a time, a year after those developments that had taken place uh, between the JDU and the BJP choosing to come together and dumping the RJD, this late in the day, can you now pull off a stable government that is already sitting and functioning? What are the options that the governor has on this, irrespective of the, the kind of numbers that the RJD would choose to show to the governor today? Well, the RJD may be claiming so, but we already know that there is a BJP and a JDU government here. They have the adequate number of MLAs here. They, they are, it's, a, it's a running government. It's a functioning government here. And even if you, even if the opposition is not satisfied with the government, they want to stay claim, then definitely there are options before the governor. The governor may ask the opposition leader to to, uh, to bring a no-confidence motion in the assembly. That is the procedure to which the opposition will have to go. But the, the opposition may meet the governor. They may stay claim. They may do all these 
the showcasing, but definitely we all know that it is on the floor of the house that the strength has to be approved. And when there is already a stable government here in Bihar, and if they just were to think that there are many opposition MLAs in touch with them, then definitely he is free to bring a no confidence motion on the floor of the house. <laughs> That's right. That's the route to be taken, in fact, to call in for a no confidence if you're so confident about your own numbers that you have. Sham, many thanks for getting us those inputs. This, of course, being a, a direct fallout of what has happened in Karnataka and the argument that the party with the largest numbers is, is invited to form government, even if it doesn't cross the halfway mark of the state assembly. We're looking at the fallout in yet another third state now, and this is in Manipur. The former Manipur chief minister here, Okram Ebobi, has met with the governor to stake claim to form the government in Manipur. This is once again along the same argument for being the party with the largest numbers, not enough, of course, to cross the halfway mark, but the largest numbers in the assembly to stake claim. So you have the former Manipur chief minister, Okram Ebobi, doing the same, taking lessons from what has happened in Karnataka, saying that we also have the right to do this and each respected state governor this in manipur now should be inviting them because they have the largest numbers you have okram ebobi there meeting the governor to stake claim to form the government in showing the numbers that they have let's get in further inputs we have with us arindam das with those details arindam what are the numbers here that okram ebobi has shown the governor today uh, well, yes, uh, in the last assembly elections, uh, the Congress uh, won uh, 28 seats, whereas the BJP won 21 seats. Uh, but uh, sincerely, seven of the Congress uh, MLAs, uh, after the verdict uh, was out, uh, switched over to the BJP. So right now, the Congress uh, has uh, 21 MLAs. Uh, so uh, as of now, we don't know what is the number Okram Yubavi has uh, shown to the governor. But yeah, uh, a delegation of the Congress Party led by former Chief Minister of uh, Manipur, uh, Okram Ibovi Singh, has met the governor and has uh, uh, staked claim to form the government in the state, uh, saying that if uh, something uh, can be done in the state of Karnataka, why not in the state of Manipur? Because in the last assembly elections, it was the Congress Party which was the uh, uh, largest, uh, single largest party. I mean, uh, they won 28 seats in a house of 60. They were only three short of the, uh, um, uh, the magic numbers. So right now, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, former chief minister of uh, Manipur, Okram Ebubi Singh, has uh, met the governor of Manipur in uh, Raj Bhavan and has uh, uh, submitted a memorandum and, this, uh, and has said that uh, if uh, the, the, the BJP can be given a, an opportunity to form the government in the state of Karnataka, why not the Congress uh, be given a chance to form the government in the state of Manipur? But, uh, Arindam, and what we're seeing playing out in each respective state with the same situation, be it Manipur, Bihar, Goa as well, in each of these parties meeting with the governor saying that we have the first right, it has been done in Karnataka, needs to be done with us as well. But is this, is this just optics playing out in knocking at the door of the governor this late in the day after almost a year of the existing government in the state? At the most, what they should do is go ahead and ask for an opportunity for people who admittedly don't have the number would have given them opportunity to try and muster that number in whichever way they could now that is unlikely to happen because the time is so short it's unlikely to happen so let's hope for the best and i hope that this would be a good message to those who play with the constitution why they always ask for something, but they don't explain why. Why? You can say that somebody is far away, they'll take some time to come. Well, take 24 hours, we'll, we'll keep it after place. So if the court had said, do it now, today, there might have been difficulty because people go back to their constituencies, etc. They get a message and then they come. So why were they asking for more time? Why were they asking for Monday? It's a big question. And doesn't this question indicate that they don't have the numbers? तो इसका स्वागत है मैं मानता हूँ कि कोर्ट ने एक संतुलित निर्णय दिया है जिसमें कि कोर्ट की ये इच्छा कि वो 
किसी उच्च स्तर के संवैधानिक पद पर रहने वाले किसी आ, किसी पद पर कोई प्रश्न चिन्ह न लगाएं और उसी के साथ साथ व्यवस्था का कोई फायदा ना उठा सके और अवैध रूप से कोई व्यवस्था and of course uh, being senior lawyer mr salman khurshid speaking out on the developments that have taken uh, place today at the supreme court hearing that took place today this morning specifically uh, with respect to the case in karnataka for uh, the flow test now that has been ordered by the supreme court to take place tomorrow by 4 pm in shortening the time of 15 days that yadurappa was given by the karnataka governor he's of course explaining arguments that have taken place in the supreme court today on why more time was being asked for this flow test if they're confident about the numbers they need be ready by 4 pm tomorrow and this is exactly what's going to be taking place two days after the governor of karnataka had invited bs yadurappa to take oath as chief minister to prove his majority within 15 days the supreme court has ordered this flow test in the karnataka assembly tomorrow by 4 pm so there are no two ways about it in what was originally 15 days time has been cut short just for about 48 hours within his swearing in until the flow test the chief minister cannot take any policy decisions the supreme court will take up the case to scrutinize merits of the governor's decision in about 10 weeks time from now questioning the basis scrutinizing the basis on which yadurappa was called in and sworn in as the chief minister of karnataka but the game of thrones is what we are calling it here it continues both parties claiming that they have the numbers they have the majority crossing the halfway mark मुझे खुशी है कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने भी जो मूल सिद्धांत है उसको माना कि इसका निर्णय कि बहुमत किसके साथ है सदन के पटल पर ही होना चाहिए अदालत के कॉरिडोर्स में भी नहीं हो सकता राजभवन के लॉन्स पर भी नहीं हो सकता किसके साथ बहुमत है बहुमत का निर्णय केवल और केवल सदन के पटल पर हो सकता है और ये निर्णय जल्दी से जल्दी होना चाहिए ताकि असमंजस की स्थिति समाप्त हो